for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find f times g of x. Right? It says for the given functions f and g, so we have f of x is equal to x minus 1 over x squared minus 25. We have g of x is equal to x plus 5 over 1 minus x. And it wants us to find f times g of x. So essentially all they're wanting us to do is multiply these two things together. Take f of x, multiply it times g of x. So they want us to take x minus 1 over x squared minus 25. And we're going to multiply that by x plus 5 um, over 1 minus x. So essentially what we're doing is we're multiplying rational expressions together. Rational expressions are just fractions that are in polynomial form. All right, so that's what we have going on here. When we multiply rational expressions together, uh, we do want to first make sure that our rational expressions are simplified, which means that they are factored. So if I take a look at the numerator and denominator for f of x and for g of x, there's only one piece to this that can be factored. x minus 1 can't be factored, 1 minus x can't be factored, x plus 5 can't be factored. But this x squared minus 25, this can be factored. And I know this from experience. I can see, taking a look at this here, that this is uh, the difference of squares. All right, so if you have any binomials or trinomials uh, in your problem that look like they can be factored, do try and factor them out first, whether it's a matter of just factoring out a greatest common factor, whether it's, you know, completely factoring it into your two sets of parentheses, but just kind of glance over everything just to see if there's anything that you can do. If it can be, if it can be factored, you need to do so. If not, we can continue with multiplying. Now, x squared minus 25, I know, is the difference of squares because we have two terms. One is positive, one is negative, and these are both perfect squares. Remember that difference of squares is the one that comes with the formula, where it says a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. We just need to figure out what a and b are. a is just what times what gives you your first term. The only way to get x squared is to do x times x just like the only way to get 25 is to do 5 times 5. So using the difference of squares formula, this means that this factors to x plus 5, x minus 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug that in over here, back for our denominator, because we want everything to be in factored form. Now, when we multiply, we don't actually want to multiply everything together. Like, we don't actually want to foil it all out. What we're looking for is we're hoping for things to cancel. Um, we also need to remember a rule uh, in math uh, that says that if you have the same thing in the numerator as you have in the denominator, they cancel out to a 1. And I say that because we have an x plus 5 right up here. We also have an x plus 5 down here. And because one is in the numerator, one is in the denominator, we can cancel those out. And if we do that, we're left with x minus 1 over x minus 5 times 1 over 1 minus x. So we need to take a look and see if there's anything else that can be canceled or simplified. Um, taking a look at this problem, though, I do see I have an x minus 1 here and a 1 minus x. These look very, very similar to each other. But up here, the 1 is negative, the 1 is positive down here. The x is positive here, the x is negative down here. They're very close to being the same thing, and it would be great if I could cancel them out with each other. But with the way that they look, I can't cancel them out as they are. But what I can do is this. I can take this fraction and only this fraction and multiply it by negative 1 over negative 1. That's technically just multiplying it by 1, which isn't going to change the value of it. Uh, but it is going to change the signs, which hopefully will then allow me to cancel it with that x minus 1 up here. So the x minus 1 over the x minus 5 is going to stay the same. We're just multiplying everything on the right side here by negative 1. So it's just going to change the sign of everything. That 1 is now a negative 1, and that denominator, that's now a negative 1 plus x. And if we can see, now we do have the same thing. 
the x is positive and the 1 is negative in both of them. x minus 1 is the same thing as negative 1 plus x if you just flip flop that around. Right? If we switch the position of these two, you get x minus 1. Right? They are the same thing. But um, what's important is they are now the same thing. All we had to do was multiply by a negative, and now we can cancel these two out leaving us with a negative 1 in our numerator and an x minus 5 in our denominator. It doesn't look like there's anything else that we can do here. So this is our final answer here. We get a negative 1 over x minus 5 after multiplying these two functions together. Otherwise, that's it for this video.